very much thank you very much so good morning excellency good morning excellency this is nilab dalmia the other co-chair for the asian committee from phd morning morning i can't see your picture mr dalmia Yeah. Yeah, I keep it off because of the internet sometimes becoming slow. So are we set to? I uh, think we should also take the opportunity yet to uh, uh, also welcome the members from the V Trade, Vietnam Trade, uh, uh, who are already sitting on the desk. Uh, there are three gentlemen. uh they are a bit too far away for us to actually make out their uh, uh names names maybe if the weird trade people can zoom in to their names we can say a very good morning to them also good morning good morning hello how are you welcome sir good morning uh, <laughs> gentlemen mr bui i request if you can introduce your uh, people from the vietnam to all our panelists please uh, yes uh, sir can you please do one minute hi guys sir i am master pak chang chao we will go in uh, one minute two minutes sure sure sir i'm connect the problem okay uh, sorry okay. yeah please wait Let me say in isolation zone. Then we we now have the brief introduction. Okay. 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 Please wait. Vijay ji, how are you? Yeah. Very good, Ajay yeah. Pudar ji. Good morning. Good morning. Um, President sir, we'll have around thirty uh, companies from Vietnam who will be joining us. Uh, oh, great! Excellent. How long have you been in Vietnam? Yes, sir. How long have you been posted in Vietnam, sir? Now eight months. Eight months. I think it's eight months. Yeah. July. July. Yeah. I came okay. in July. Yes. July 2019. Yeah. Do you have had the pleasure of meeting uh, Ajay Podar ji face to face? Of course, of course. Great, great sir. Um, Ajay Podar ji is a great leader, sir. Our great leader for the um, um, for the Asia. And uh, I think uh, uh, Pranay ji, you are probably also aware of uh, our uh, uh, newly returned SG, Mr. Sourav Sanyal. He has returned back to us. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, Excellency, and good morning. He has just joined. Good morning. Good morning. And we also have Mr. Pradeep Multani, our Vice President, also, sir, who is online. Now, yes, yes, Pradeep ji has also appeared on the scene. And uh, to be the best sir of all, all our international communities. And uh, His Excellency, Mr. Pradeep Multani, he takes care of all the international communities of PSG Chamber of Commerce. So, this being one of the ASEAN committee. So he overall looks all all the international affairs coming. Thank you, President, and good morning again to everyone. Good morning, good morning. Pradeep ji, ah, Pradeep ji, your ad is uh, really catchy, ah. Huh? It is coming up very nice. Thank you, brother. I'm I'm glad you are seeing it. Trying to do yeah. it for the country also. No, no, it is definitely very catchy. Ah, uh, Pranay ji, ah, uh, Pradeep ji is. Uh, 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 uh runs a company called multani uh, which is in the ayush area and uh, you know he has got uh, this fellow uh, kya naam boman arani to do a very nice uh, ad for him as his brand ambassador and do a very good ad for him praying to the people to keep uh, social distancing and uh, work under the prime minister's uh, policies Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> sir, Ji, should we start now? Yeah. I think the master. I welcome you for this important session which we are doing on India-Vietnam on business promotion challenges and opportunities post-COVID. 
I welcome His Excellency Mr. Pranay Verma, the Ambassador of India to Vietnam for joining this session, sir. Thank you very much. I also extend a warm welcome to His Excellency Mr. Pham San Chau, the Ambassador of Vietnam to India. Thank you very much, sir, for sparing your time and being with us. I also welcome the other panelists from Ministry of Trade Promotion Agency, Vietrade, Trade, for joining this session. I welcome our President, Dr. D.K. Agarwalji, our Vice President, Mr. Pradeep Multani, Mr. Ajay Poddar, the Chairman for the International Affairs Committee for ASEAN, Mr. Atul Anand, the Co-Chair for the International Affairs Committee for ASEAN, Mr. Nilav Dalmia, the Co-Chair for the International Affairs Committee ASEAN, and our Secretary General. And we also have uh, roughly around 75 plus attendees who are there in the list, and out of which around 30 are from the Vietnam trade. Thank you very much, sir. So just to start, I would now request Dr. D.K. Agarwal, President, PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to give his presidential address, please. Thank you, Naveen. Good morning, everyone. See, Mr. Pranav Verma, Ambassador of India to Vietnam. His Ex Excellency, Mr. Pham San Ambassador of Vietnam to India. Uh, Mr. Pradeep Vice President of Commerce, Agency, Minister of Industry of Vietnam, Mr. Du Kong, Director General, Mr. Ajay Podar, Chairman of our International for Ashan Station of PhD Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Atul Anand. Co-Chairman of the same committee, Mr. Saurabh Sanyal, Secretary General, PhD Chamber of Commerce, officials from government of Vietnam, industries from Vietnam, members of the PhD Chamber of Tea, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the PhD Chamber of Commerce and its uh, more than 150 members, I extend a very warm welcome to uh, uh, His Excellency Mr. Pranay Verma, Ambassador of India to Vietnam, and His Excellency Mr. Pham San Cho, Ambassador of Vietnam to India. Well, first of all, I would like to thank people, Vietnamese government, for flattening the COVID-19. Am I audible? There's some problem. Am I audible? Your, your voice is cracking, sir. DK sir, I suggest that you put off your camera for some time. Okay. Uh, you know, because with that, your bandwidth will increase going towards audio rather than going towards video. I agree. I agree. I'll just do it. Am I video, uh, visual now? Audible Am I audible? Is, yes, sir. Yeah. It is better. Perfect. Right. So, uh, as I said, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Vietnam for uh, achieving the success of flattening the curve. I was just reading, uh, they had only 268 infections and there has been no death. This is a big, big achievement by any standard when the world, almost 29 lakh people have got infected and uh, almost uh, more than 2 lakh people have died. Uh, what I understand, uh, Vietnam was one of the first country to uh, you know, close its airports, to ban the foreign travel and also it quarantined almost 10,000 people just in the month of February as soon as they got uh, 10 people who were visiting from China, uh, uh, they got them infected. So they started taking action quite early and uh, it is amazing that a country with a population of 9.7 crore having no death and only 268 people as infected. It's a big achievement. And uh, what I also learned was that uh, uh, your biggest listed company, Win Group, they modified their uh, automotive and uh, mobile manufacturing plant to manufacture almost 55,000 ventilators in a month. It's a huge, huge achievement. Similarly, you have been making almost 7 million Fab, uh, this fabric mask on a daily basis and almost 5.72 million surgical masks on a daily basis. 
kudos to vietnam for achieving this such a proactive action and uh, ensuring that uh, there is no death and uh, you are able to flatten the curve and why here uh, your domestic flights almost 30% of the domestic flights have resumed economic activity is getting started this is a motivation and uh, big guidance to other countries and i am happy to inform that even india considering that we have a population of 1.3 billion people we also stand in that category of containing uh, this covid 19 quite successfully though uh, the battle is not uh, over yet but we are very confident that we'll come out the way our government is proactive and uh, doing a fantastic job so coming back to the topic of uh, our business relations the opportunities first of all i would like to say that we share a very cordial and a very friendly relationship with the vietnam dating back to 1950 when our uh, prime minister jawala nehru and uh, your uh, and his counterpart in vietnam uh, they met in 1954 and since then there has been a lot of uh, visits uh, to and fro from various uh, leadership of the countries uh, if i talk about the trade between uh, vietnam and india it is uh, almost uh, in the last 9 months from 1st march 2019 to 31st december 2019 the trade has touched 9.8 billion dollar we are the uh, vietnam is the 14th largest trading partner for india and india is the 7th largest trading partner for vietnam in fact there is a absolute matching between the india's east look east policy and vietnam's look west policy there is a absolute synergy between the two countries and uh, the way indian uh, industries indian businessmen have gone to uh, vietnam uh, almost 255 projects have been set, in, set up by india in vietnam and the fact that vietnam provides a good opportunity because vietnam has free trade agreement with the asia with various other asian countries even with eu even with the uh, us so that gives us lot of uh, for our businesses lot of opportunity to be in vietnam and uh, set up their industries there so almost uh, 1.9 billion uh, dollar worth of investment has flown from india to vietnam and uh, uh, i am happy to say that uh, vietnam gdp grew by 7.02% in 2019 though after this uh, covid outbreak uh, the world bank has uh, revised the growth projections of 2020 to 1.5% but i'm sure vietnam the way they have handled this covid 19 they will bounce back i mean and they will uh, make sure that uh, the world also grows with the help of vietnam as we say india would help the world growth similarly we believe that vietnam is going to help the world to grow uh well i would uh, like to mention that uh, india's stated policy after covid 19 is to promote three t's travel tourism and technology so psd chamber would ensure that whatever it needs we would help the business people from both the countries to set up businesses in uh, each country in uh, each other's country and also whatever uh, is uh, support is needed from phd chamber of commerce we will provide all the support to boost the trade between the two countries and with this i close here i welcome all the guests all the participants to today's conference thank you thank you very much president sir for sharing your views and uh, initiating this discussion now i would request mr ajay poddar the chairman for the international affairs committee for asean east asia and oceania to give the theme address and specifically discussing about the india vietnam issues mr ajay poddar please thank you excellency pranay verma ambassador of india to vietnam excellency c pam san chao ambassador of vietnam to india 
our president Shri Agarwal, Shri Pradeep Multani, Vice President, uh, Director General of Vietnam Trade and Promotion Agency and Ministry of Industry and Trade of Vietnam, Mr. Deputy G Director General, Ministry of Industry and Trade of Vietnam, Mr. Sanya, Secretary General, PhD, CCI, officials from government of uh, Vietnam, industrialists from Vietnam, members and guests of PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you. I welcome Excellency Pranay Varma. I'm so happy that you are here to share your insights with us and our members. We are extremely grateful for the warmth which you, uh, with which you received our delegation in August last year. And uh, your advice, your hospitality and facilitation uh, was invaluable. Uh, Ambassador of Vietnam, uh, Excellency Pham uh, San Chao has been a great friend. He's also the chair of the ASEAN Ambassadors in India. Congratulations. And uh, we are grateful for your unstinted support all of last year. I don't know how many meetings we had with you. And your initiative in getting a very strong 18 member delegation from Vietnam to India uh, for the India ASEAN conference was really an icing on the cake. And uh, the very fact that on a holiday, on a public holiday, where we were apprehensive how many people would come, 150 people came specially for the exhibition and uh, conference. So that is a, a tribute and a lot of relationships have started then. And I'm sure that with your help and with the help of uh, Excellency Varma in Vietnam, we'll be able to uh, do a lot. Uh, this pre president has already spoken about the effects of COVID-19 and what it means going forward for both our countries. Of course, global trade has been a key victim of this outbreak. But uh, I would say that distribution, and demand slack and recession are in the short term bound to impact both trade and exports. But it will make us realize a few things. One is that nobody in the world can buy expensive technology. We cannot make goods which buy goods which should actually cost $1 at $10. And this will make us uh, work with people who are nearer to us. So I think there is a great, there is a lot of uh, warmth and friendship and complementarities between India and Vietnam, and we'll be able to uh, work together very well. Now major companies uh, in of India are already invested and investing in energy, mineral exploration, agro-processing, sugar manufacturing, agrochemicals, IT. And I would say that uh, bilateral trade and economic linkages continue to grow. India's, as uh, my president said, is one of the top trading partners, but of course, we are not satisfied with our position. And I think instead of seventh and 14th, these numbers should move both ways to the top five. Uh, I uh, also look at Vietnam as our window to Southeast Asia. So many companies want to have a hub or a base in South for Southeast Asia operations. And I think Vietnam with the advantages that it offers can be that hub for many Indian companies. And I think as a chamber, we would like to work to facilitate that. Then there is, uh, there is, of course, services sector is the largest in India with a gross value added at current prices estimated at uh, Indian rupees 92.26 lakh crores, and which is 64, almost 65% of to India's total GVA. So in the services sector also, we have a lot of uh, to contribute. And uh, we, uh, this comprises of, of course, economic service, social service, 
ट्रांसपोर्ट स्टोरेज एंड कम्युनिकेशन ट्रेड होटल टूरिज्म बैंकिंग इंश्योरेंस एजुकेशन हेल्थ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी ई कॉमर्स एक्सेट्रा सो दी स्पेसिफिक ऑपरचुनिटीज आई सी बिग वे इज टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम इंडिया अ लॉट ऑफ गुड्स कैन बी मेड मच चीपर एंड वी हैव द टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव द नो हाउ एंड विथ योर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एफिशियंट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सिस्टम्स दिस कैन बी बिग and this can be in sectors like healthcare especially fmcg artificial intelligence agriculture food processing and of course prime scientific research can also be jointly done then export of auto components apparel franchising of retail chains in the fmcg and health services we can import special steel composites we can import uh, confectionery processed foods textiles and i think in the retail segment there is scope for vietnamese companies which have not yet been explored fully i think by companies in vietnam defense and security cooperation has of course become an important pillar uh, of our comprehensive strategic partnership with these words i eagerly await to learn and imbibe from all the learned speakers who are to follow thank you very much thank you very much uh, chairman sir for giving us the insight on the india vietnam now to hear it from the our uh, friends from vietnam i would request mr do kwa hong the deputy director general ministry of industry and trade vietnam to share with us the overview on vietnamese economy and trade relation of india and vietnam thank you good morning Uh, Excellency Ambassador Anai Lama, Excellency Ambassador Phạm Thanh Châu, uh, Director General of Vietnam Trade, Mr. Hu Quang Phu, uh, Deputy Director General of Vietnam, uh, Mr. Lê Văn Đại, uh, Dr. Lý Khai Yala Wan, and Dr. San Sai Yala Wan, Mr. Chai Mota, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, please excuse me for. Not citing your full title because I have only five minutes, so I have to try to be as short as possible. It is my great honor and also pleasure to attend the video conference today on Vietnam-India business and investment opportunity. I am even more excited to see my old friends in good shape. Thank God, everybody is in safe hands. Full of optimism and positive energy. Today, I'd like to share with you, especially Indian friends, about two main topics. The first one is the uh, economic situation of Vietnam and Vietnam-India trade relations in the first quarter of 2020, and the second topic is how we can uh, together overcome the difficulties. Caused by the pandemic to continue developing bilateral trade relations. Firstly, I would like to touch on Vietnam economic situation in the first three months of this year. As the coronavirus epidemic evolved to a global pandemic, many countries were seriously affected. But unfortunately, as Dr. E. K. Alawan has noted earlier. Vietnam has shown positive results in preventing and controlling the spread of the coronavirus, as well as minimize the negative effects of the pandemic on the economy. While many countries have experienced negative growth, Vietnam still scored a 3.82 percent GDP growth rate in the first quarter of 2020. The Asian Development Bank even forecasted that our GDP growth for the whole year will still reach a 4.8 percent. Nevertheless, this low growth rate still means a lot under the context of uh, GDP contraction in many other countries. Actually, Vietnam trade turnover in the first three months reached 122 billion US dollar, equaling a 5.7. Percent increase compared to the same period of 2019. Export value reached uh, 63 billion US dollar, 
people in uh, 7.5 percent increase, while import value reached roughly 60 billion US dollar, equaling a 3.7 percent increase. And we enjoy a trade surplus of even uh, 3.7 billion US dollar. And also in the first quarter, we also succeeded in attracting uh, 8.5 billion US dollar in FDI even though this amount is uh, a little bit less than the, the level of uh, the same period of last year. Besides the about mentioned achievements, there remains a number of difficulties and challenges for our economy and businesses. The first challenge is the disruption in the material supply chain, especially for the textile, footwear, and automotive industries. In the first quarter, many factories in Vietnam had to operate under the capacity or even had to stop production because of, uh, there was no uh, raw materials. The second challenge is the contraction or even the vaporization of market demand, especially for textile, all tech products, iron and steel, construction materials everywhere. The third challenge links to logistics transportation, and manpower subject. During this uh, pandemic, because of restrictions on travel and manpower subject, transportation of commodities became much more difficult, time consuming, and more expensive than ever before. All of those aforementioned challenges have affected bilateral trade between Vietnam and India in the first quarter. Our bilateral trade reversed the rising trends in recent years, reaching only 2.5 billion US dollars, which was a drop of 4.5 percent uh, compared to the same period, uh, period of last year. Uh, during this unprecedented time of regional and global difficulties, it is heartening to see that Vietnam and India keep sending shoulder and shoulder together on the basis of our comprehensive uh, strategic partnership to survive the COVID-19 pandemic together and continue to enhance bilateral trade relations. I'd like to recommend that we reflect on the suggestions of Indian Prime Minister on the 19th of April 2020, which revolve around the three following powers. Adaptability, efficiency, and universalism. Regarding adaptability, we need to immediately adapt ourselves to changes with applications of the most modern and creative measures. We need to enhance our interaction via online platforms, such as the video conference that we're having today, or mutual information sharing, discussion, and collaborations. Also, electronic platforms must be enhanced to support trade promotion and business matching activities so that businesses of both sides can maintain the supply chain and export market. Regarding this matter, I believe that uh, Mr. Wu Fu, Director General of Real Trade, will have a lot to share with us today. Mr. Fu, the pioneer and the fire keeper of trade promotion in Vietnam, has managed to keep Vietnamese businesses trade promotion activities intact amid even the height of the social distancing and lockdown period of time. As for efficiency, agencies of all countries need to think simple and to simplify the administrative procedures. But so the best interests of the consumers and businesses need to be encouraged and supported. I myself personally concur with the Indian proposals on the use of the electronic certificate of origin uh, recently, as the uh, and, uh, because of the nationwide lockdown in India has rendered the issuance of paper zero zero uh, infeasible. I think the proposal is not only beneficial and effective for the citizens and businesses during the lockdown time, but it also helps reduce the time and cost of business activities 
during normal economic setting. I think various agencies are positively considering this proposal. With universalism, we all know that the disease, I mean the COVID-19, does not distinguish between races or nationality. It does not distinguish between Vietnam and India. So therefore, we must unite to support each other on the foundation of our brotherhood and unity to overcome the difficulties. It is important that we create the most favorable conditions for our businesses and refrain from imposing additional difficulties and barriers unnecessary for import and export. In that spirit, I propose that uh, <laughs> India uh, refrain from applying trade remedy measures on Vietnamese products, such as steel, copper, wines, uh, printing plates, and to consider the abolishment of restricting measures such as minimum export import price for cashew, nuts, people, and licensing for Magati. On a personal point of view, I'd like to add one more hour. Interconnectivity. When the traditional supply chain is disrupted, India can be seen as a source of supplementation for Vietnam and vice versa. For instance, when Vietnam faced difficulty in sourcing more raw materials for textile and footwear, uh, luckily, India promptly gave a helping hand. On this occasion, I'd like to thank HNC Ambassador Panay uh, Vekma, HNC Deputy Chief of Mission of India and Hanoi, and officials of the Embassy of India and Hanoi for promptly providing a database of Indian textile garment companies to help Vietnam avoid interruption in the supply of raw materials, uh, raw materials back in February 2020. On the side of Vietnam, we look forward to providing India with products such as processed food, fruits, uh, fresh fruit, like uh, dragon fruit, tea, coffee, spices, cereals and grain, and gases. These are high quality products that can suit Indian consumers' demand, as well as the demand for export processing of Indian companies. Last but not least, I'd like to say, to emphasize, and the COVID-19 pandemic is of our strong partnership and mutual trust. I believe that we will be able to rise to this occasion, overcome the adversity and seize mm -hmm. the opportunity during this crisis to further develop the bilateral trade relations for the mutual benefit of the people and enterprises of both countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your views. Now I request the DG Vietnam Trade to kindly share his views and basically the ideas that post lockdown, how can we take the India Vietnam uh, relations further? Yeah, Mr. Wu Ba Fu, Director General, we trade. We request uh, for sharing your views, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. MC. Um, yes, I silence uh, Mr. Uh, memories and uh, many potentialities. Ambassador of Vietnam to India, Hong Sai Chau, his silence is silenced and many uh, potentiality. Ambassador of India to Vietnam, Panay's. Uh, Black Mark. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, President of Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PhD, New Delhi, uh, India. Distinguished guests from Vietnam and India, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Betrays is a state agency under the Vietnam uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade. As published in the uh, year 2000, with main function of trade promotion, investment promotion for the development of Vietnam industry and trade and Vietnamese brands. Since the beginning of the year, the COVID-19 pandemic 
house breaking across the block has a hind of many Vietnam trade promotion activities to the world in general and to India in particular. Of course, it has clearly affected remarkable to a series of business support program planned by the big trade. In Central or uh, South Asia, India with a population of nearly 1.4 million people is a large market with great potential for many quality products of Vietnam's strength, such as tea, paper, uh, rubber, fiber, textile, woodwork, chemicals, chess, <coughs> rattan, plastic materials, uh, confectionery, and sewing products. Therefore, it is a uh, very special uh, attention by the Vietnamese government and by many uh, businessmen. The Vietnamese government highly appreciates Indians and Vietnam's uh, hands, largest trading partners. However, there are still unexploited uh, potential between the two countries, despite uh, their fast growing, growing economic background, young dynamic, and um, aspiring uh, working class. In an effort to contribute to the deepening uh, of trade uh, partnership with India, with the aim that the two way trade turnover will bridge uh, new heights, uh, the Vietnamese government, together with the many agencies and organizations, including with trade, with uh, its leading role in promoting trade of Vietnam have been accompanying with many Vietnamese localities, trade association and business to focus on the diversity, diversity diversified trade promotion activity with India. Some promotion activities have been uh, carried out recently and uh, brought uh, significant effects to business such as the Vietnam base in India, provisions of extensive information about plans and distribution to involve business of the two, uh, two countries. Organization uh, trade mission in the frame of the Vietnam National Program on trade promotions. Organization seminar to provide market information, share business experience and opportunities. Uh, however, as you can clearly see, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused these activities to be delayed. Ready and benchmarks. In order to support uh, business to cope with the pandemic, prompt, uh, promptly uh, overcome negative impact on the enterprises of the two countries and for the benefits mm -hmm. of the long-lasting and good uh, trade cooperation relation between Vietnam and India, with trade determines that it is necessary to strengthen cooperation with relevant agencies and organizations of India, including Chamber of Commerce and Industries, PSU, New Delhi, to also find out new and innovative ah. uh, trade promotion direction suitable for the new context during COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. In the immediate uh, future, when the COVID-19 pandemic is uh, still uh, unpredictable, I suggest that we should join hand to carry out highly feasible business support activities on the basis of the information information technology applications, uh, helping the <coughs> eliminate difficulties for the business due to the direct context, limitation, and other matters, such as remote ge geographic distance, um, inconvenience traffic, 
India is a country with a world developed information technologies industries, while the Vietnam is also part of the providing many valuable information technologies products to the world markets. So we are fully able to work together to conduct webinar and such one um, as, as the one organization today. Those webinars can help us to inform uh, business of the two size opportunities that can be taken advantage to committed uh, trade agreement to uh, the countries of the two countries. Besides, we can cooperate to get uh, to organize business matching programs uh, to digital platforms such as online B2B conference, uh, virtual trade fair and distributions, B2B e-commerce platforms, helping business from both sides quickly resume uh, the supply of the raw materials uh, for production inputs and outputs for consumers. In the process of the conducting trade, conducting uh, trade promotion activities, we have uh, realized that many Vietnamese products such as long yards, leeches, uh, rambutans, durians, uh, and uh, eaters um, are favorable by the Indians. Why vice versa? Uh, there are Indian products that Vietnam needs, but have not yet been present in each other markets through. Uh, there are many Vietnamese and India business willing to cooperate in distribution uh, those products. Therefore, I hope that his finances, extraordinary uh, and clinic uh, potentiaries, ambassador of India to Vietnam, South China, uh, Pegma, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PhD New Delhi, with your great position in, uh, in India, will have an important voice to relevant India authorities on speeding up the market opening of Vietnam products. At the same time, restricting the application of the measures to obstruct uh, bilateral trade, such as invest investigation and imposition of the anti dumping and anti subsidy uh, tax taxes, having planned to support each other goods in shift, convenient distribution during uh, COVID 19 and post COVID 19. Great uh, potential in economic and trade cooperation between Vietnam and India has been waiting to be discovered. Joint efforts in trade promotion activities will contribute uh, to strengthen Vietnam and India economic relations, bringing uh, mutual benefits to both countries and being able to provide India with the with a solid foundation to join the economic with ASEAN in general, I believe. I hope that through this webinar, we will discuss and exchange ideas openly, better understand each other's needs and capacities. Come to an agreement on trade promotion cooperation opportunities for the benefits of the enterprises, supporting enterprises to safely overcome the pandemic, really preparing for uh, to quickly respond to trade and market development after uh, the end of the COVID-19, contributing uh, to strengthening the trade relation of the two countries that has been built on the sustainable foundations. I would like to take these opportunities to introduce um, you to the Vietnamese International Food um, uh, Industry Exhibition uh, 2020, Vietnamese Food Export. 
the biggest events in Vietnam in the fields of the food industry and organized by the Betrayed, which will take place on the November 18th to uh, 21st of the 2020. And Vietnam's industry exhibition held in 2021, a time of hope when the COVID uh, pandemic will have uh, uh, flown away. We look forward to welcome business and uh, of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of PhD New Delhi to visit and trade up these exhibitions. Beatrice is always ready to coordinate, create favorable, favorable con uh, conditions for the member of the Chambers of Commerce and Industry PhD New Delhi to connect business effectively with long-term stability and development sustainability with Vietnamese enterprises. With that in mind, I wish our webinar today a great success. I wish the good health of the two ambassadors and all of the participating in this webinar. With India, we successfully control COVID-19 pandemic in the near future. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Few, for giving us the detail about what all can be done in recent times. And as you very rightly mentioned that a lot of matchmaking and B2B meetings have to be done. So for sure, from the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we will be in touch with your office. And in maybe another two weeks or so, we will have another exclusive session between the interested parties. And as you also mentioned about the Food Expo during November, we, our members will be very much interested. And we will again get in touch with your office and uh, see more details about that and pass it on to the members. So now to take this event further, I would now request His Excellency Mr. Fan San Chao, the Ambassador of Vietnam to India, to share his views about this pandemic, please. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of you. Let me be uh, Excellency Ambassador uh, Verma, Excellency uh, Leaders of PhD, dear colleague from Vietnam, and dear participants. Let me start my speech by expressing my deep appreciation and high appraisal for the PhD Chamber of Commerce for the initiative. I think in India, there are a number of big chamber of commerce, but PhD has volunteered this idea and it has shown its relevance to do business with other international partners, especially with Vietnam in this difficult period of time. With your permission, I would like to share some of my observation concerning the pandemic and how we should move forward post COVID-19. I want to share with you four points and four observations mainly. My first observation concerning the impact of COVID-19 on the world economy, on, on our economy respectively, and how I see it. According to the report produced by ADB, the pandemic has cost four trillion US dollars of all the major economy, including USA, EU, and other major economy worldwide, including Vietnam and India. That costs then around 5% of the total output. But the impact is much higher if we include in the analysis, the cost, the indirect cost caused by the social financial crisis, and also the long-term impact that the pandemic has had on education and healthcare system. With that, I believe that no single economy in the world, no single country in the world 
can be escaped from the impact of the pandemic. Having said that, I want to stress that the, impact, the pandemic has caused tremendous losses, but, but this is my observation. It cannot reverse the major trend of the international world order as well as the tendency of the world we live in today. Mainly, the pandemic cannot reverse the tendency of international cooperation, the tendency of globalization, the tendency of regional integration. Having said that, I want to stress that the trend for cooperation among nations across the world, and especially between India and Vietnam, is an irreversible tendency, and we need to continue with that. If we remember a lot of new mechanism which was born after a certain sort, let's cite the example of the crisis in 1973. After the oil crisis, G7 grouping was formed. And after the crisis in 1997 and then 98, G20 was formed. So I believe that after this crisis, another regional grouping, another format will be formed in the future in order to facilitate international interaction and globalization. So this is my first observation. My second observation is about how Vietnam has responded to the pandemic. I'm thankful to what has been said earlier by the previous speakers about the achievement that Vietnam has made in its fight against pandemic. I just give you one single figure, and I hope that the finger can speak for itself. If we combine the four other countries and territory, namely Taiwan, uh, namely Republic of Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and Chinese Taiwan. The population is same size of the population of Vietnam, nearly 100 million. And the total number of confirmed cases is 12,000, whereas that of Vietnam is only 270, which take around 3% of the total population of uh, total confirmed cases of those countries. And they have more than 200 deaths, whereas Vietnam don't have, don't have any single casualty at all. Having said that, I want to stress that many Western newspapers and media appraise tremendously the efforts made by those four countries and territory. And to some extent, they may forget the exemplary role of Vietnam. We have been able to cover all this with our strong determination, with early action, with the consensus of the entire people of Vietnam and the resolute determination of the leaders of Vietnam. But not only we have achieved success in the fight against pandemic, Vietnam assumed continuing successfully its role as ASEAN chair. Vietnam has been able to convince the head of state and head of government level, the 10 ASEAN plus China, Korea, and Japan, in order to discuss the way and means to, to curve the pandemic. And in New York, Vietnam, in its capacity as the chair of the UN Security Council, as well as in its capacity as a non-permanent member of the council, continue to play its very successful role. And in addition to that, the Parliament of European Union and the Council just finished the last ink for the actual implementation and bringing into force of the EVFTA. And Vietnam is working very hard for the signing of RCEP. Having said that, at the same time we are fighting the, the pandemic, we still play its, our role successfully in world order in the regional structure as well as in the non in the free trade agreement arrangement therefore the position of vietnam is keep increasing and not least vietnam know how to take the opportunity during 
the COVID pandemic in order to adjust its production, as has mentioned earlier by one of the speakers, that Vingroup has shifted its automobile factory in order to make all the testing machines and equipment, medical equipments. And we also have been able to work closely with Dupont in order to produce productive units to be shifted to United States and get the appraisal from President Trump in his Twitter. Social network, we also care for that by launching nearly 10% of our GDP with 25 billion US dollar, a package, a rescue package that cover not only the, the uh, 15 billion assistance in terms of tax, uh, 30, 30 billion in terms of helping the company to recover, but we also have, uh, we also transfer cash. It's around 2.5 billion US dollars to the low, uh, low wage or uh, work wages. It means that we care also for the taxi drivers, for the uh, lottery uh, sellers. So we care for our old people in addition to all our donations that we made available to the neighboring countries as well as to the United States, Russia, China, Japan, and European countries, and also including uh, India. We are delighted to, to have the Red Cross of Vietnam delivered 100,000 